Gursky. But the unsung hero of the game was a man named Abe Cohen. I think the game in, in, in all the years that really sticks in my memory as a whole game is our championship game with the Bears in 1934. Bears had a great team. I think they came in undefeated. Bronco Nagurski was at his prime. Bronco, with the style he had of running, uh, with his shoulders not too far from the ground, he was a tall man, about 6'2 and 220. And if you tackle him low, he'd trample you to death. If you tackle him high, he'd carry you 10 yards. At halftime, I believe we were down by 13 to 3, and we were pretty well beaten. The field was absolutely frozen. Ray Flaherty, who was our captain and an assistant coach, had come from Gonzaga University in Spokane, and he remembered that in one of his college games, his team had worn sneakers on a frozen field, giving them a great advantage. We couldn't find a sporting goods store in New York that was open. We had an assistant clubhouse man named Abe Cohen with us, who also worked for Manhattan College. We put him in a taxi cab and sent him up to Manhattan College to get the shoes for the basketball team, the sneakers for the basketball team. Just before the second half started, he had 12 pairs of the largest sneakers he could find, so we put them on. And we could see him putting on tennis shoes in there while we thought, oh, hey, that's, that's uh, foolish, that's uh, going to help them. We're going to walk all over their feet. Right away, we said something was wrong because they had good footing and we didn't have good footing. And we were slipping and sliding around and they were running all over us. And they started just piling up yardage and getting in position and they'd be, end up beating us uh, 30 to 13. They just outsmarted us, I guess. That, that was about the size of it. There was legal, there was nothing wrong with it. But I remember during that game, George Hallis would come out on the field and he'd look at those sneakers and just shake his head, walk off grumbling. Back to